welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be starting a series of new videos about streaming and tips for new streamers. I've been streaming for a little bit over a year now and I had a lot of fun uh, throughout the whole journey. It took me about four months to make partner and I'm gonna share some tips with you guys on how I was able to achieve that. Since I feel like so many people in my community have recently started streaming themselves, I really wanted to share with you guys things that I did that I feel like would help you guys reach that point, share some knowledge that I feel like helped me get to where I am today and hopefully they'll help you too. I created a Google form survey and I gave it to my community and asked them if they had any questions about streaming that I could help answer for them. I have the doc linked below so if you have any questions that you want explained or want more clarification on, feel free to fill it out and I'll see what I can do. Tip number one. I know you've heard this one over and over and over and over again from every single YouTuber and TikToker that streams, but have a consistent schedule. How are people gonna find you and come back to watching you if you stream at different times every single day? When I say have a consistent schedule, I don't mean make sure you go live at 8 p.m. on the dot every day or else no one's gonna watch you. What I mean is be live around 8 to 9 p.m. It doesn't matter if you're late by half an hour, but just from that point on, have a consistent, you know, four or five hours that you'll be live for. So people know around that time they can find you. I think that being consistent is probably the one thing that helped me grow the most as a streamer. When I first started streaming, and I'm not advising that you guys do this because as I streamed, I learned that this was actually counterproductive. But when I first started streaming, I streamed for seven hours, six to seven hours every single day. Like I would go live at 8 p.m. and I would be live until 5, 6 a.m. sometimes, every single day. And this was on top of a full-time job as well, so I was dying, like dying. <laughs> but having a really consistent stream schedule, regardless of how often you stream, is one of the most important parts for growth, in my opinion. Having a consistent stream schedule allows you to have people who are free around the same time every day tune back into you and make a stronger personal connection with you as a streamer and as a streamer that's what you should be focusing on your personal connections with people my second tip for you newer streamers out there is to stream a consistent game category now this depends on what you're looking for as a streamer of course if you're looking to just stream whatever you want and have a good time with your friends you do you that's an amazing reason to stream you'll definitely enjoy it have fun but if you're really looking to grow your channel increase viewership etc it's really really hard to do that as a variety streamer and i'll explain why so those people who tune into you because they're interested in for example genshin if you stream something else the next day like league they're a lot less likely to keep watching you on your league stream and if you keep switching it up like that it's hard to maintain a consistent viewer base that will keep growing as you keep streaming when i first started streaming i only really played Monster Hunter. And that's another point that I'll touch on a little bit later as well. It's very important to choose your game wisely if you're gonna be focusing on growing your stream. So for me, when I first started streaming, I played just Monster Hunter, no other games. For pretty much six, seven months, I streamed six, seven hours of Monster Hunter every single day, and that was all I did. That was, that was my entire stream. I learned that streaming one game, as long as you enjoy it, it doesn't really feel that bad. I know a lot of streamers will tell you to stream and switch it up uh, or else you get burnt out. But I feel like if it's a game that you truly, truly enjoy and you're passionate about, like I was about Monster Hunter, and you're fine playing it for like six, seven hours a day anyway. And that's what I did. Uh, I, I have about 900 hours in Monster Hunter right now. And that's just on PC. I think I have a couple hundred on PS4 as well. But... I think when you're playing a game that you enjoy and you're passionate about, people can really see that as well. So pick your game wisely. On a similar note, my third tip for you newer streamers, pick a game that is not super oversaturated. The reason I feel like I was able to grow so fast within Twitch, even though Twitch is horrible for discoverability, is because I was streaming a game that not a lot of people were streaming. I was streaming Monster Hunter and I think at any given time, there was only about 20, 30 channels, that, English channels, that were streaming the game. Even when I only had maybe 10 or 20 viewers, I wasn't very far down on the Twitch discoverability list. And that's what you want. You don't want to be buried under a thousand other channels when you're just starting out with like 10 or 20 viewers. Because it's so hard for people to find you. Like, who's gonna scroll all the way down to 
watch somebody they've never watched before. Not that nobody does that. Like, I'm sure people do that to make friends. Um, but it's just not done as often. But again, I don't want to be the person that's telling you not to stream League. If you like to play League, go ahead and stream League if that's the game that you enjoy. The most important part of streaming is to enjoy yourself and make friends, right? But this is just for tips for how I was able to grow so quickly within those four or five months when I first started streaming. So picking a game that has an uh, like an okay viewership, but not super front loaded, is a good idea. So front loaded just means, for example, when you click on the league category, the top channels have like tens of thousands of viewers, whereas the lower channels have like, of course, zero or one. You want to find a category where the top is maybe a hundred to 200, I think that's a good range for you to be able to be discovered still and still have a fair amount of viewers in the category. So you can find these stats just through scrolling throughout Twitch. If you click into a game, you can see right away how many viewers the top couple channels have. If you scroll down a little bit, you have a good idea how front loaded the game is and how saturated it is. My fourth tip for streamers is to make your stream as pretty and as interactive as you possibly can. So. I'm sure all of you, if you've looked into streaming or have watched streams, you know of uh, this feature on Twitch called channel points. And they're points that your viewers can earn while they're watching you and then spend to make you do things like drink water or get up and take a stretch. For you to make your stream enjoyable and interactive will help hold people there and want to stay there and want to collect the points and want to make you do things like sing or do a TikTok dance or stretch or do something that you know you might not really want to do but it'll be fun to watch something else that you can do with the channel point redeems uh, that i didn't really learn until much later on is you can sort of quote a script so that when someone redeems a channel point redeem option certain emotes or certain sounds or certain pictures will pop up on the screen it'll make the stream very hype and very very fun and i can show you guys how i did that in a later video my last tip my fifth tip for streamers is to really focus on the people that come into your stream i feel like unless you're some god tier level pro like valorant or pro league player let's be honest no one's gonna come watch you because you're good like there's just, there's just so many other very amazing professional players that do stream. So why would they watch you over those professional players? I think one of the most important things that I felt like helped me grow my community and my stream is to really care about every single person that comes in into your stream. Really make the effort to get to know them, like ask them what they do for work, uh, what they play, um, where they're from, if they're comfortable sharing that. And really, you know, get to know them on a personal level, make a connection, keep building that connection as people, and that'll really help them stay and want to come back. The most important part of streaming is to talk to people and make those connections because isn't that what you're streaming for? So how, how would you make this personal connection, you ask? How, how do I connect with people, Lily? Well, let me tell you <laughs> the most important thing is to always keep talking and i'm sure you've heard this too like over and over and over again from every single streamer that makes youtube videos or does tiktok you've heard this keep talking don't let there be dead air like dead silence the worst thing you can do is um not be talking for an extended period of time so when someone clicks in it's just silence and then they just click out even if there's nobody in your stream, comment on what's happening in the game. Narrate what you're doing. So for me personally, I talk to myself a lot anyway. And when I'm playing a game, I'll narrate what I'm doing. I'll say what I'm thinking out loud. I'll think about what I need to do in the game and I'll just say it. Like I need to gather 10 herbs and oh, where can I find these herbs? And I will say all of this out loud. And if somebody like drops in and they hear me saying stuff and questioning where things are, more often than not, they'll be jump right in and be like, oh, it's an area 12. And I'll be like, oh, dude, thanks. I really appreciate that. And that's a lot of my first interactions because I'm not good at Monster Hunter or any game by any means. But just thinking out loud about the things that I needed to get done or had questions about really, I guess, started a lot of conversations with people that I didn't even know that came into my stream. Another way to fill that dead silence when you don't might not have too many viewers at the beginning is to just be in a Discord call with your friend. For the first month or two, I think when I first started streaming, 
it made me very uncomfortable to be talking by myself to a camera like i it made me so it felt so awkward and i feel like if you've never really made videos or streamed you might feel the same way as well and what really helped me ease into it was to be in a discord call with one of my best friends not too many people because you don't want them to drown out your commentary and your stream but just someone who would chill with you and maybe they're playing a game too and you guys can talk about what you guys are doing in game etc etc so once again i think this last tip is the most important uh, and it's to really focus on building your connections with each and every person that comes into your stream so really thinking about every single viewer that comes into your stream what is one thing you can do to help make their day a little better or help them a little bit in the game if they need tips on builds or armor or help with the quest like are you able to help them are you able to ask chat if anybody is able to help them really focusing on what you can do for them those are the five things that i personally feel like were the most important in my growth as a streamer and were the most important uh, to help me reach partner last year i hope that you found one or two tips that will help you in your journey as a streamer i love you very much i hope you have lots of fun uh, and do shoot me a question if you have any questions that you want to be answered you can find me live on twitch or drop the question in the survey below I'll see you next time.